Electric here. Today is Sunday, April 27th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. We've reported about more affordable American EVs and development from the likes of General Motors and Tesla, but we can officially add Michigan's very own Slate Automotive to the list. Never heard of Slate? Well, the startup is run by CEO Chris Barman, who had previously served as an executive at Fiat Chrysler, where she worked for over a decade. We've heard whispers about Slate for quite a while, but this week they finally debuted their customizable electric truck platform. They've been touting a sub $20,000 starting price after federal incentives, provided consumer EV subsidies haven't been deleted or reduced by the time customer deliveries begin. The compact two-seat pickup measures 174.6 inches long, a bit shorter than a 1990s Ford Ranger pickup. Slate's slogan, We Built It, You Make It, explains the opportunity for its near endless personalization capabilities. It starts with a blank slate with injection molded polypropylene composite body panels reminiscent of GM's defunct Saturn brand. All vehicles are produced in the color slate gray and buyers can choose from pro or DIY color wraps if gray isn't the right fit. There are five different body kits to transform the two-seater pickup truck with a five-foot bed into a five-seater SUV with a full bed cap or a fastback cap. The brand also offers an open-air back and an option to exclude the doors. There are over 100 accessories to choose from, including exterior options like roof racks, grill and bumper upgrades, a spare tire carrier, fender flares, running boards, a bed step, lift or lowering kits, wheels, and lighting. There are also mounting points all over the vehicle to encourage an aftermarket economy. On the interior, Slate offers add-ons including a center console, colored seat covers, door panels and armrests, floor mats, auxiliary buttons, slatelets that clip to the air vents, kind of like those gibbets for Crocs, other options include steering wheel buttons for Bluetooth control and additional speakers or mounts. The vehicle comes with manual crank windows and there is no infotainment screen. Instead, there is a USB powered mounting system for drivers who wish to bring their own device like a phone or a tablet. All of that sounds pretty cool, but what about the propulsion system? Well, the Slate truck is powered by a rear wheel drive, 150 kilowatt or 201 horsepower, permanent magnet synchronous electric motor with 195 pound feet of torque paired with a single speed gearbox and open differential. It can hit a top speed of 90 miles per hour and a zero to 60 mile per hour time of eight seconds. There are two battery options, a standard 52.7 kilowatt hour gross pack with a 150 mile range or an accessory battery totaling 84.3 kilowatt hours, targeting 240 miles of range. Friday, Slate announced a deal with South Korean battery supplier SK On, where they will supply 20 gigawatt hours of battery capacity between 2026 and 2031, with an option for additional volumes as Slate scales up its production. SK On will be providing their nickel, cobalt, manganese chemistry for Slate's trucks. The vehicle will come with a native North American charging system port that can accept up to 11 kilowatts for AC charging and 120 kilowatts peak for DC fast charging, which Slate says will reach 80% in under 30 minutes. A portable AC charger with 120 and 240 volt support will come with the vehicle. There will also be a Slate app allowing owners to locate charging opportunities. Slate says the app will also keep track of DIY maintenance with other features to be announced later. The 3,602 pound truck can support a 1,433 pound payload capacity and can tow up to 1,000 pounds. Storage includes a five foot bed and a seven cubic foot frunk with a drain. Standard safety features include automatic emergency braking, forward collision warning, a backup camera, and up to eight airbags depending on the configuration. 
Eric Kuiper, Slate's head of engineering, said that they're targeting a five-star safety rating from the federal government's new car assessment program and a top safety pick from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The company is promoting a do-it-yourself culture and says owners can have Slate partners install accessories or perform installations independently with the help of Slate University, a series of online tutorials. The brand also plans to sell direct to consumer with online ordering and the option to pay for the vehicle to be delivered directly to the buyer's home. Before the product launches, Slate plans to announce a partnership for service with 2,500 locations across the U.S. Slate is set to enter production in late 2026, which could be only drivable demonstrators rather than customer deliveries. They'll manufacture the truck at a reindustrialized factory in the Midwestern USA, along with a customer experience center. Notably, the company has been posting manufacturing jobs on LinkedIn near Indianapolis, Indiana, where the CEO grew up. They have planned for a 150,000 unit annual run rate when production has fully ramped. With the $50 refundable deposit, pre-orders are now open at Slate.auto for U.S. customers only. If you want to see the Slate truck for yourself, their website's calendar shows static display appearances coming up in Utah, Oregon, and Detroit, Michigan this June and July. This project has been in development for nearly three years now. In early 2022, Slate was initially formed under a project called ReCar within Rebuild Manufacturing, which is an incubator for domestic manufacturing co-founded by former Amazon consumer CEO Jeff Wilkie and Miles Arnon, a fellow MIT grad and managing director for several VC and private equity firms over the years. Slate has financial backing from the likes of the Jeff Bezos family office and the Walter Group, led by Mark Walter, CEO of successful investment firm Guggenheim Partners. With over $100 million raised so far, seasoned automotive leadership, and a simple manufacturing plan, the startup is poised to weather a notoriously capital-intensive industry and the prospect of macroeconomic headwinds. But do you think a product and concept like this can make it to production and profitability? Let us know what you think in the comments. Now, I know last week we asked you all if you want us to continue covering concept vehicles, and it seems like we had a mixed bag of answers, but many of you stressed that if it is a concept with plans for production, it's probably worth talking about. Well, at Auto Shanghai this week, Mercedes-Benz revealed the new Vision V, a chauffeur-driven, luxurious, all-electric van limousine concept. The top of the line Vision V on display is a preview of one of the company's first products on their modular van electric architecture, also known as van.ea. The production version of the Vision V is expected to be built on an 800 volt system and have an estimated range of over 311 miles. The Ultra Lux concept includes a 65 inch cinema screen with seven projectors and a 42 speaker Dolby Atmos surround sound system designed as a private lounge on wheels or limousine for VIPs, executives, and affluent families. Mercedes-Benz confirmed the production model with CEO Ola Kalinius saying the concept and the production model will be remarkably similar. This V-Class replacement will have a product range with names including the VLE to VLS. It will be available in the United States, China, and Europe. Pre-orders are expected to begin mid-2025, and 2026 production is likely to occur in China, with additional manufacturing possible in other regions. Can we safely say this is the complete opposite of the slate? Okay, on to more Shanghai Auto Show highlights. CATL, the global leader in EV battery production, showcased three revolutionary battery technologies at its inaugural Super Tech Day. At the event, they featured three new battery developments, including their Freevoy dual power battery, their second generation Shenzhen super fast charging battery, and Nextra sodium ion battery. The Freevoy dual power battery introduces a dual chemistry architecture combining sodium ion and LFP or dual LFP systems with self-forming anode technology. The design is intended to ensure stable energy for L3 and L4 autonomous driving systems. 
while offering superior cold weather performance and extended range that can be customizable for various EV applications. This kind of reminds me of BMW-backed and Michigan-based battery supplier Our Next Energy's split pack design. The Shenzhen Superfast Charging Battery stole the spotlight with a record-breaking 12C charging rate, delivering 1.5 miles of range per second and 323 miles in just 5 minutes with a peak power input of 1.3 megawatts. CATL claims the pack can offer up to 497 miles of total range and performs exceptionally in cold climates, charging from 5% to 80% in 15 minutes at 14 degrees Fahrenheit, outpacing competitors including BYD and Tesla. CATL now plans to equip a whopping 67 car models with Shenzhen batteries in 2025. The Nextra sodium ion battery, which they claim is the world's first mass producible model, will achieve a 175 watt hour per kilogram energy density, rivaling lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries. The battery is designed with two forms, one for passenger EVs and one for heavy duty trucks. They said the passenger EV version of the battery will deliver 310 miles of range and over 10,000 charging cycles. It can operate reliably from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 158 degrees Fahrenheit while retaining 90% capacity at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. CATL says there is no combustion risk with these packs. This is notable since China's upcoming 2026 battery production standards mandate that batteries must not ignite even during thermal runaway events. As for the heavy-duty truck version of the battery, the company says it boasts over 8 years of service life. CATL says mass production for its Nextra sodium ion batteries will begin this December. According to CATL's CTO, over 18.32 million automobiles are already equipped with CATL batteries and they operate in more than 66 countries globally. Keep the battery advancements coming! Now, CATL wasn't the only one announcing battery advancements this week. Ford Motor Company announced what they're calling a significant milestone in future battery technology with its new lithium manganese rich or LMR battery chemistry developed at its Ion Park Battery Center of Excellence in Michigan. The breakthrough was revealed on LinkedIn by Charles Poon, Ford's Director of Electrified Propulsion Engineering. He said the LMR battery promises to deliver safer, more affordable, and longer range EVs by the end of the decade. He explained that the LMR battery offers three key benefits. Enhanced safety comparable to lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries, higher energy density even over high nickel batteries for greater driving range, and significantly lower costs compared to current mid nickel batteries. Ford said they are already producing the second generation LMR cells at their pilot line and are currently in the process of scaling with aims to integrate this technology into its upcoming EV lineup by the end of the decade. Charles stressed the goal is to achieve cost parity with gasoline vehicles and deliver affordable customer solutions tailored to their needs. The introduction of LMR is a key enabler in offering electric vehicles that are both accessible and desirable. LMR batteries are historically known for not being able to handle high current demands, have rapid capacity degradation, and with uncompetitively low lifetime cycle counts. We are looking forward to learning more about how Ford has overcome those challenges with this chemistry. Well, those are our top EV news stories for this week. I hope you'll all check out our detailed e-bike buying guide and several recently published detailed e-bike reviews over at the at Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel. We have many more in post-production and we'll be publishing frequently to that channel. Thank you all for joining me this week and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.